Hello, and welcome to the exciting world of Ford Explorer. This video program is Ford Motor Company's way of saying thanks for purchasing one of the most popular sport utility vehicles on the road today. You know, as a new owner, you know Ford Explorer has plenty to offer in terms of quality, roominess, and safety. And with so many new features and options, we think you'll find that the best just got better. To help you get the most pleasure from your new vehicle, Ford Motor Company has put together this video to help you get familiar with your new Explorer's unique features and capabilities. During the next few minutes, we'll be telling you about many of the numerous features designed to make your ownership experience even more satisfying. In the first section, Explorer features safety and convenience, we're going to concentrate on safety and how to use some of the major features of your new Explorer. Next, in Explorer operation, on and off the road, we'll discuss maintenance procedures and Explorer's operational controls. Plus, we'll provide you with information on how to best handle your new Explorer on and off the road. In the third section, Explorer Comfort, Luxury and Style, we'll show you how to adjust Explorer's interior features for your greatest comfort and convenience. Finally, in Explorer Personality, Accessories and Possibilities, we'll take a brief look at some of the items available for you to customize your Explorer according to your own needs and preferences. You know, we've taken special care in this video to cover most of the more popular features available on Explorer. But if there's any item on your vehicle we haven't included, please consult your owner guide and maintenance schedule. They contain valuable information every owner and driver should know. It's also a good idea to get familiar with all the decals and labels located throughout your vehicle. They provide important warnings and information that you'll want to review from time to time. Of course, your local Ford dealer is always there for you whenever you have questions about your Explorer. We feel confident that by the time this video ends, you'll be able to appreciate and use the features and benefits of your new Explorer even better. Now let's get started. I'm sure you've noticed your Explorer comes with just one key. No more fumbling around for the right one. This one key operates the door, lift gate, and glove box, as well as the ignition. Explorer is equipped with optional power door locks, feature a two-step locking mechanism, which allows you to unlock the driver's door alone, or all the doors, including the rear lift gate, from the driver's door. If you'd like to unlock just the driver's door, turn the key only once. But if you wish to unlock everything, then turn it a second time. Now, for those of you with the optional anti-theft system, this feature works on all the locks. Incidentally, by lifting either the driver or passenger side door handle, the interior lights will turn on, adding to your security and convenience. Nice feature in a dark parking lot. As you may have already guessed, the people at Ford Motor Company are very concerned about safety. That's why they've designed your new vehicle with so many safety features. For example, each Explorer comes equipped with two standard airbags. There's one for the driver and the other for the right front passenger. When used with safety belts, they can provide front seat occupants with additional protection during a moderate to severe front end collision. The driver's airbag is located right here. It's right at the center of the steering wheel. And the passenger bag is right over here in the instrument panel, right above the glove box. To make sure the system is operating properly, always check to see if the airbag readiness light comes on for about six seconds when you start the engine. If the system is not operating properly, any of four different things might happen. The readiness light might not come on at all, or it might flash, or it could remain lit considerably longer than the normal six seconds, or you could hear a series of five beeps. Now, if any of these things happen, even just once in a while, please have your system checked at a Ford dealership. Just remember, that readiness light is there to monitor your system, so please pay attention to what it shows you. Now, safety belts are obviously another important safety feature, so just make sure you always buckle up, even on short trips. To buckle yourself in, just pull the last shoulder belt from the refractor so that the shoulder portion crosses your chest and the lap portion is as low on your hips as possible. Make sure the belt is not twisted and insert the metal tongue into the receptacle. When unbuckling, just push the red button to release the latch. For greater comfort, your Explorer features a shoulder belt height adjuster that slides into five different positions. To adjust the height of the belt, push down on the release button 
and slide the adjuster to the bottom of its travel. Then raise it to where the shoulder belt is in its proper position comfortably across your shoulder. Another safety device incorporated into all four-door explorers are child-proof safety locks in the rear doors. When the child-proof lock is in the up position, the rear door cannot be opened from the inside. For information on installation of child safety seats, please refer to your owner guide. The rear seats also have something not very common on sport utility vehicles, rear outboard seat head restraints. These are a valuable safety and comfort asset for your rear passengers. No safety devices are more important than those that could help you avoid an accident entirely by helping you improve the performance of your vehicle under adverse conditions. Explorer's four-wheel anti-lock disc brake system does just that by allowing you to maintain steering control when braking on a slippery road surface. To do this, the ABS system senses wheel lockup during a severe braking situation. It then automatically modulates brake pressure to the disc brakes to assist in a sure stop. If the driver hits the brake pedal too hard during the stop, the anti-lock brake system automatically pumps the brakes to keep the wheels from locking up. But the ABS system remains active as long as sure is applied to the brake pedal. While the system is activated, the driver will feel a pulsing vibration through the brake pedal and may even hear some brake noise. The brake noise and vibration are normal conditions of the anti-lock brake system, so if they are present, it means the brake system is doing its job. With anti-lock brakes, it's important to apply steady pressure to the brake pedal when stopping. In the event of a panic stop, do not pump the brakes. Pumping the brakes will diminish braking effectiveness during an anti-lock stop. When driving your new Explorer, it's also important to remember that the braking characteristics of a four-wheel drive are the same as a two-wheel drive. Contrary to what some people may think, the driver cannot stop in a shorter distance because of four-wheel drive. But if you are involved in a collision or have a sudden impact, there's another feature you should know about. It's called the fuel pump shutoff switch. It automatically shuts off the flow of fuel if your vehicle is severely jarred. A warning lamp in your instrument cluster also indicates when the fuel pump shutoff switch is activated. The fuel pump shutoff switch is located underneath the instrument panel on the passenger side. And once the switch is triggered, the only way to restore fuel flow to the engine is to reset it by depressing the red button. Otherwise, the engine will not start. But before you activate anything, always check to see if there's any spilled fuel present. Remember, if you see or smell fuel, don't activate the switch. When you really consider all of its safety features, the airbags, safety belts, rear seat head restraints, child-proof safety locks, anti-lock disc brakes, and the fuel pump shutoff switch, you'll see that Explorer is designed with safety in mind. And the design of your Ford Explorer goes beyond safety to those features that just make day-to-day -day life a little easier. That's right. The Ford Explorer owes a lot of its popularity to its versatility. And one of the features that makes it so versatile is the split folding rear seats. If your new Explorer is a four door, you have the 60 40 rear seat combination. And if it has leather seating surfaces like this one, then the rear seat features reclining seat backs. To recline the rear seats, press the recliner handle and hold it in place to adjust the seat into the position you want. Then release the handle to lock the seat back in place. As I mentioned before, the rear outboard seats on all Explorers feature adjustable head restraints. They're designed to adjust up and down, and the head restraints tilt out of the way so that you can fold down the seats without having to remove the head restraints. Like you have to on some other sport utility vehicles on the market today. That's right. All you have to do to fold down the rear seat in your Explorer is simply adjust the head restraints, rotate the reliever at the side of the seat, and fold the seat down until it locks into place. With one seat lowered, there's plenty of room for a single passenger and long objects that need to run the length of the cargo area. Now, the two-door Explorer also features a split folding down rear seat, and it operates in a similar manner to the four-door. And with both seat backs lowered, there's plenty of room to take full advantage of all the space that's available. You know, all Explorers also have convenient tie-down hooks in the rear cargo area, which are used to hold down the optional cargo net. To operate the cargo net, depress the button on the cinch. Then loosen the webbing to accommodate all of your packages and pull the cord to tighten it back up.
Remember, all cargo should be properly secured. Now, some of you may have ordered a privacy shade for the cargo area. If you did, it's very simple to operate. Just pull the shade toward you to prevent anyone from seeing what's inside. And when you don't need the shade, it can be easily removed entirely just by activating the release at either end. And while we're back here, let me tell you about another convenient feature. If your vehicle is equipped with power door locks, you will find a special switch on the left-hand trim panel. Now, this switch allows you to unlock or lock all the doors, including the rear lift gate, from the rear cargo area. That really is convenient when you're moving things in and out of the back. Now, if your Explorer has a roof-mounted luggage rack like this one, a couple of things you should know. For example, the rear crossbar can be adjusted to accommodate various objects. To make an adjustment, slide the locking switches at each end of the bar toward the rear of the vehicle. When the bar is unlocked, move it to a new position. Then slide the switches back toward the front, locking the bar in place. The luggage rack also features four D-rings that can be adjusted to secure your baggage. Just twist the top of the D-ring to release it, slide it to a new position, twist it back to lock it in place. The luggage rack offers you a lot of versatility. But there is one thing that we need to caution you on. The weight limit for the rack is 100 pounds. Well, I guess that brings us to the spare tire. Yep. We hope you never have to, but if you do ever need to change a tire, we've got some helpful hints that will make things easier. On the two-door model, the jack handle is stored beneath the carpet in the rear cargo area, while on the four-door, it's located behind the split folding rear seats. Other components such as the jack, lug nut wrench, jacking instructions, and a handy pair of tire changing gloves are stowed behind an access cover. To remove the spare tire, insert the jack handle into the actuator hole at the rear bumper and turn it counterclockwise until the spare is lowered to the ground. To stow the spare, just reverse the procedure by turning the handle clockwise until the lift mechanism finishes its travel. Then make sure the tire is securely seated by pushing on it. If, however, your vehicle is equipped with a temporary spare, the regular tire won't safely fit in the spare tire carrier. And this means you must stow the damaged tire in the rear cargo area, securing it with the tie-down straps that have been provided. Remember, whenever you replace a tire, you should always replace it with a tire that has the same size, same load carrying capacity, and same tread design as the one originally on your vehicle. Otherwise, the safety and performance of your Explorer can be adversely affected. Now, if you have any questions about the size and type of replacement tire needed, read the information label on the driver's door. The owner guide is another good source for tire information. But if you still have questions, consult your Ford dealer. This section covers the part I like best, driving your Explorer. But first, a brief word about maintenance. Vehicle maintenance is very important. If you service your Explorer according to the recommended service intervals and maintenance practices described in your owner guide, you should be able to keep your Explorer in good working order for many years to come. And now let's look at some of the unique features under the hood. After releasing the safety latch at the center of the vehicle, the hood will rise to the wide open position with little effort, thanks to the special hinge system. Many owners like to service their own vehicles. If you're one of them, there are several do-it-yourself service points, like the engine oil dipstick, the automatic transmission dipstick, the windshield washer reservoir, and the engine coolant recovery reservoir. Each service point is highlighted in bright yellow lettering so that you can find it easily. For example, if you need to add engine coolant or windshield washer fluid to your vehicle, there are two reservoirs that are clearly marked to indicate their functions. If you have the optional rear wiper, it has a washer reservoir that is located at the left rear of the vehicle, above the rear tail lamp. It's visible when the lift gate is open. You know, another nice feature that's been designed into the Explorer to make life easier is the battery saver. If you happen to leave your interior lights on with the engine off, the battery saver will shut down any power going into the interior lighting system after 40 minutes, which helps preserve battery life. However, if any door is ajar while you are driving your vehicle, the interior lights will remain on. That's right. You know, as a world-class sport utility, 
The Ford Explorer is designed to provide superior performance, both on and off the road. So let's take some time to look at the on and off road features, contributing to Explorer's outstanding reputation. Now, before we go out on the road, let's run over some of the things you should know about your driving controls. If you purchased an Explorer with an automatic transmission, it has an overdrive feature, which, when activated, provides the greatest fuel economy and is best for normal, everyday driving. You can turn off the overdrive function from the gear shift lever by pressing on this button. When overdrive is deactivated, an indicator light turns on after the system has been completely disengaged. It's a good idea to deactivate overdrive while driving in high elevations using speed control or while you're pulling a trailer on a steep grade. Overdrive is reactivated by pressing again on the same button. In addition to overdrive, your automatic transmission is equipped with a brake shift interlock feature. Now, this safety device prevents the driver from shifting from park to any gear unless the brake pedal is depressed. The speed control is another system that you should know about. If your Explorer has speed control, it allows you to set the speed of your vehicle when you're traveling more than 30 miles per hour. To activate the system, press the on button. Then set your speed by continuously pressing the set Excel button until you've reached the speed you want. Once your speed control is set, you can increase your speed by just tapping the set Excel button. Each time the button is tapped, your Explorer will increase its speed by one mile per hour. To slow down, either continuously press the coast button or tap the coast button to decelerate in one mile per hour increments. If you ordered your Explorer with control track four-wheel drive, you'll experience state-of-the-art 4x4 technology. You have three driving modes that you can operate in. Uh, selecting the four-wheel auto mode provides the most versatility. This mode sends power to the rear axle and instantaneously mods power to the front axle when increased traction is needed. As similar to an anti-lock brake system, the four-wheel auto mode uses an onboard computer and electronic sensors to determine the need for four-wheel drive. When the sensors detect any slight rear wheel slippage, the computer automatically transfers power to the front axle to provide increased traction. Within milliseconds, the system will provide four-wheel drive as conditions call for it, such as when you're driving on snow, ice, wet pavement, loose gravel, or in off-road conditions. However, the system reverts to rear-wheel power when you're back on dry or non-slick surfaces, which maximizes your fuel economy. With this versatility, you may find that this mode is your primary selection. The two-wheel drive mode only sends power to the rear axle, it might be selected when the need for increased traction is not anticipated over an extended period of time, like a cross-country trip on dry interstate pavement. To shift from two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive auto or back again, just rotate the control track switch at the instrument panel. A four-wheel drive light will tell you when the system is activated. You can make your shift from two-wheel drive into four-wheel drive auto at any time, no matter if the vehicle is moving or not. The third mode is the four-wheel drive low mode, and it provides continuous four-wheel traction. It's used whenever you need constant power to both axles, like when maneuvering over rough terrain. Now, this mode is not recommended for speeds over 35 miles per hour or while driving on dry pavement. To shift in or out of four-wheel drive low, you must stop the vehicle and put the transmission in neutral with the brakes applied. When shifting into four-wheel drive low, a four-wheel drive low indicator lamp will turn on at the instrument panel. The Explorer Limited 4x4 model comes standard with an automatic ride control system. It provides your vehicle with shock dampening and full-time load leveling capabilities as needed, such as when you're pulling a trailer, for instance. The system also automatically adjusts ride height. For example, when four-wheel drive low is selected and you're traveling below 30 miles per hour, automatic ride control raises the body one inch above the curb height, providing greater clearance for off-road use. Now let's get started. When starting your vehicle, there's no need to depress the accelerator to get the engine going. The electronic fuel injection system has eliminated the need for putting the pedal to the floor. And if your vehicle is equipped with the optional keypad, 
It supports an auto lock feature. Now, with auto lock, the doors automatically lock after the engine is started. The automatic transmission is shifted to a forward gear and the brake pedal is released. To activate or deactivate auto lock, follow the instructions listed on the back of this keyless entry code card. It's found in your glove box. One of the things you should remember when driving a 4x4 is that it handles differently from a passenger car, especially when fully loaded. That's because 4x4s are designed and built to be used under off-road driving conditions. Because of the extra clearance needed by off-road vehicles, they have a higher center of gravity, requiring extra caution when driving through emergency situations. For example, if you're driving along a road and something happens to make your vehicle go off the edge of the pavement, slow the vehicle down, but don't apply the brakes too severely. As soon as you have control, ease the vehicle back on the pavement after traffic clears. And be sure not to turn the wheels too sharply when returning to the road. And if you're forced off the road into a ditch, don't try to cut the wheels too sharply to come out of it. What you should do is continue in a straight line to the bottom of the ditch, and then ease yourself out of it. Again, checking for traffic before re-entering the highway. As an extra measure of caution, we recommend that you take it slow and easy until you get to know your new explorer. And whenever driving in any type of vehicle, you should always remember to avoid sharp turns or any abrupt maneuvers that would cause you to lose control of your vehicle. Caution should also be exercised when you're off-roading in the backcountry. When you're operating in tight situations, you should always make sure that you have plenty of room for the front and rear of the vehicle to clear obstacles. Always swing wide enough to avoid getting hung up. If you ever find yourself in a situation where you need to drive over a log, it's best to roll over the log one wheel at a time, rather than attacking it head on. We call this maneuver duck walking. And always make sure you have enough clearance between your vehicle and the obstacle. When climbing steep hills, the best and only safe way is to drive up the grade in a straight line. Never try to reach the top by angling up the grade. The same rule applies when descending down a steep grade. Always go straight down the hill. Plus, you should drop your vehicle into the four-wheel low mode so you can use the engine to slow your descent. Mud and water can be even more tricky to drive in. When driving through muddy or wet areas, watch out for any sudden changes in speed and direction. Even a four-wheel drive can lose traction in slick conditions. If you start to slide, turn the wheels in the direction of the slide to regain control of the vehicle. Water is not only equally challenging, it can hide hazards not apparent from the driver's seat. So before you attempt to cross any stream or bog, check to see how deep the water is. Make sure it's not so deep it will go over your hubs. When traversing the water, drive slowly to avoid splashing. You don't want to drown out your ignition system. And be sure to test your brakes when on dry ground. If they're wet, Drive slowly while touching lightly on the brake pedal to dry them off. If you're driving in sand or any loose terrain, try to keep your wheels on the most solid part of the trail. And to get the best results in this kind of terrain, put the transmission in low gear and accelerate slowly. If you can, avoid lowering the air pressure in your tires to improve the traction. But if you must lower the pressure for any reason at all, just remember to reinflate the tires to the recommended pressure before returning to the highway. There's a lot of natural beauty in the great outdoors, and it's there for everyone to enjoy. So whenever you use your new Explorer in the backcountry, use approved off-road areas and leave the land as you found it. It means the beauty will be there for those who follow. So tread lightly. You know, going for a carriage ride on a beautiful evening like this is always a lot of fun. But it also makes you appreciate the comfort and convenience of your Explorer. Absolutely. And one feature I really like is Explorer's optional keyless remote entry system. To unlock the driver's door, just point the key fob at your Explorer and press the unlock button once. To unlock all the doors, press it a second time within five seconds. 
If you want to lock all your doors, press the lock button. And this will also arm the optional anti-theft alarm system. To make sure the doors are locked, press the lock button a second time within five seconds. If the doors are properly locked, the horn will chirp and the parking lights will flash. However, if a door is open, the horn will chirp twice. For your security, the key fob also contains a panic button. When it's pressed, the horn will beep and the lights will flash. On the Limited Series, the key fob also positions the driver's memory seat when the doors are unlocked. Now let's look at the power controls conveniently located on the driver's armrest. For example, there are switches for the optional memory seat, power mirror, windows, and door locks. The controls for the optional power front seats are located at the outboard side of the seat. To tilt the front of the seat up or down, press the forward switch. To raise or lower the seat, or to move it forward or backward, use the center switch. And to tilt the back of the seat, use the rearward switch. As previously mentioned, the Limited's driver's seat has a memory feature which is operated by the keyless remote entry system. When the unlock button on the key fob is pressed, the driver's seat automatically adjusts to the position that has been programmed into the system. Up to three different key fobs can be programmed with a specific seat position. To program an individual seat position, set the driver's seat into the desired position. Then depress the set button on the memory switch and press the number one button within five seconds. That's all there is to it. Just follow the same procedure for the second person, except use the number two button. For the third seat position, press the set button, then depress buttons one and two simultaneously. If you have the power lumbar support in your front bucket seats, then you can operate it from this switch. To inflate or deflate the lumbar support, which adjusts the contour of the seat back, depress the positive or the negative end of the rocker switch. What I like about the driver's power window is the one-touch window down feature. A quick touch of the switch automatically lowers the window all the way down. If the switch is touched a second time while the window is traveling down, the glass will stop at that position. To control the window all the way through its travel, press the control switch continually until it reaches the desired position, then release it. There are a number of features you should know about to control your environment. If your Explorer features the electronic automatic temperature control system, it is very easy to operate. All you have to do is turn the system on, then adjust the cabin temperature with either the red or blue button to set the desired temperature. The system automatically maintains the temperature of the interior at the level you've selected. If your vehicle has the manual heating and air conditioning system, then just adjust the controls to suit your preference as conditions warrant. With either system, the controls are located at the center of the instrument panel. Each of the instrument panel registers has louvers that direct airflow in various directions. The registers have a positive shutoff feature which allow individuals to shut down each register. There are two questions that are often asked by new owners and both concern the radio. How do you set the clock and how do you set the stations? To set your clock, press the clock button on the radio for approximately three seconds. To change the number of hours on the radio display, press and hold either end of the seek button. The end with the arrow pointing right will increase the hours, while the end with the arrow facing left decreases it. The procedure for changing minutes is very similar. To change the minutes, press and hold the tune button. The end with the arrow facing right increases the number of minutes, while the arrow facing left decreases it. The radio on your Explorer has the capacity to store 18 radio stations. There are 12 presets for FM stations and 6 for AM. To store a station, tune the radio to the station you want. Then hold down the desired preset button until you hear the radio come back on in approximately three seconds. Now the radio station is set. The only thing left to do is set 17 more. Some explorers may feature an electronic message center in the floor console. It's designed to report on the status of several vehicle systems. For example, one of the most important readings is the condition of the engine oil. The oil life readout provides the percentage of life remaining in the engine oil. 
the Electronic Message Center bases its evaluation on a calculation of mileage, engine use, oil level, and the time since the last oil change. To keep the oil life indicator accurate, be sure to press the oil change reset switch for five seconds after every oil change. And this will reset the oil life indicator to 100%. If your vehicle has the unique high series console, there are a couple of features we should talk about. Above the dual cup holders, there's a convenient tissue pack holder, which accommodates a box of tissues that measures approximately six and a half inches by five inches. Under the console's armrest, there's a storage compartment that is large enough to hold an optional voice activated cellular telephone and a six disc CD changer. The console also features a control panel for the convenience of your rear seat passengers. It houses fan controls and registers for the heater and air conditioning, plus controls for the radio and two audio jacks for earphones. And below the panel, there's a convenient fold-down cup holder. If your Explorer has a moonroof, it's very simple to operate. To open the roof, press and hold the rear portion of the moonroof switch the glass will slide all the way back to an open position. To close the roof, just press and hold the front part of the switch until the moon roof completely closes. Now, if you want ventilation, you can tilt the moon roof from the closed position. All you need to do is press and hold the front portion of the switch. The moon roof also has a sliding shade that manually operates to block out the sun. When the moonroof is open, the shade automatically retracts to the open position. Remember, if you have any questions about your new vehicle, look for the answers in your owner guide or contact your nearest dealer. Explorer certainly has plenty of features that make it one of the most popular vehicles around. But no matter how popular a vehicle may be, people are always adding to their satisfaction and enjoyment by customizing their vehicle to fit their particular personalities and lifestyles. And that's why so many Explorer owners outfit their vehicles with custom Ford accessories, like the aerodynamically designed hood deflector, the black vinyl front end cover, the bikini hood cover, the molded splash guards, the soft cargo liner, the soft luggage carrier, the rear air deflector, and roof rack accessories, which have the versatility to hold bikes, skis, or snowboards. The possibilities are endless. To find out what's available, talk to a sales consultant at your nearest Ford dealership. They'll be happy to help you customize your new Explorer to suit your needs. Well, that about wraps it up from here. I hope this video has given you a better understanding of the unique features and characteristics found on your Ford Explorer. Remember, to get the most enjoyment from your new Explorer, treat it properly. And don't place demands on it that may make it unsafe. Your new Explorer will open new worlds to you, taking you places where you've never been before. And throughout your travels, you'll realize that you've chosen a vehicle of uncommon flexibility, one that responds to your active lifestyle and expresses your individuality. The adventure has begun, so let Explore take you in search of new worlds of enjoyment. Good luck with your new Explore. Enjoy yourself. And always buckle up. <laughs>